We are glad to have you join us on another educative edition of Hot Seats on Ogun State Television, OGTV, Grateful Steli. My name is Moses Ojewumi. Well, on this program, uh, we interview uh, people from all walks of life, um, those that have contributed a whole lot to uh, nation building, uh, those already at the peak of their career, and we uh, listen to their struggles and triumphs. We ask them pertinent questions. We talk about bony issues vis-a-vis uh, -vis their profession or calling. So, on the program uh, today, uh, my guest is um, an educationist, is an Islamic you know, scholar. So, we have a lot uh, to talk about uh, religion, about development, uh, propagation of Islam, and all that. Okay, and my guest is Dr. Dawood Amo. Uh, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Well, all things <coughs> continues in a moment. Yeah, many thanks for joining us. Uh, that was the profile of uh, my guest on today's program, uh, Dr. Uh, Dawood Amo, an Islamic scholar. He's also an educationist. And uh, yes, uh, thanks for honoring our invitation uh, once again, uh, Dr. Dawood Amo. Okay, let me just start on this note. Uh, if religiosity is a way to, uh, if religiosity translates into economic development or technological advancements, then Nigeria. Uh, would be an Eldorado, but definitely not. Uh, what's your take? Well, thank you very much. It's a very way, a, it's a good way of uh, starting the program. You see, the problem with us in Nigeria is that we are religious, we are not godly. And when somebody is religious and not godly, you find a lot of hypocrisy. You know, even some people do condemn a fella Nikolaku. It was a record. Imam Munagbaladu, pastor, they enjoy. My people, then they suffer, suffer. Honestly, that was a true message. Today, a number of religious leaders, I don't want to be generic, have become very hypocritical. They preach one thing and they do the other. In the Luke Quran, chapter 2, verse 44. Allah says, Atta Muruna Nasa Belibiri, what and Sauna and Fusakum, or Anton Tatulun and Kitaba, Afala Takilun. Why do you preach to people to do good and you forget your own soul? Are you mad? And when you go to the Christian Bible, Matthew chapter 23, start from verse 1 to 2, Jesus Christ was talking of uh, the Pharisees. Listen to what they say, don't follow their behavior. Because they say one thing and do the opposite. And that is the replica of the typical Nigeria situation when you're talking along the line of religion today. Like we did say Abinicio, Abinicio, many of our leaders, if not most of them, are either Muslims or Christians. Even when a political leader emerges and is to be sworn in, I have never seen a situation in Nigeria when a traditionalist emerges and is being made to swear with Ogun or Sangu, is either a Christian being made to swear with the Bible or a Muslim being made to swear with the Quran. But at the end of the day, what do you find? The Muslims in most cases will behave unislamically, and the Christians in the more cases than one will, be, will behave unchristianly. So the summary of the whole thing is that with the religious in Nigeria, we are not godly, and that's our bad trust. Yeah, you said uh, we are religious and not godly, and but uh, is religion not a channel? You know, not a way. It's, it's actually a way, you know, to know God. So is this not uh, contra contradictory? That is how it should be. But in Nigeria, it's not like that. Go to US, go to UK, and I've been there a number of times. You will discover that uh, the most of them they don't wear the toga of a religion. In spite of that see the way they administer their people. I was in the U.S. sometimes, and somebody told me that uh, on the highway, an elephant was crushed, but the elephants did not die instantly. And the way medical team came to the rescue of that elephant, you would think that uh, they wanted to salvage the life of human being. Life of human being, the life of human beings in Nigeria, yeah, don't mean much to our leaders. We, if anybody imbibes the dictates of religion, as it should be imbibed, that particular person will be a molde. But like I said, and I'm still repeating, 
in Nigeria we are religious, we are not godly. You see, even though if EFCC were to be unleashed to go into religious houses, many pastors will have been arrested. Many imams will have been imprisoned. And these are leaders. Because they are religious, they are not godly. Okay. But uh, religious leaders, uh, are they speaking truth, not to power? Well, speaking truth to power. You see, where you have a preponderance of a poverty, truthfulness would just uh, evaporate and condense elsewhere. Imagine this. When there's an, an election, and there have been so many contentious elections in the past, APC won, and PDP challenges at the victory of APC, and they go to court. And at the end of the day, APC or PDP is the clear winner in the more, most contentious situation. You discover that if it, the, the winner happens to be a Muslim, he will go to the church, at or go to the mosque during Thanksgiving. If he's a Christian, he will go to the church, even rolling on the ground during Thanksgiving. And what do you find? The imam, the pastors, they will be given a lot of money. And most of them will not be in a position to speak truth to the power. Even though we still have some negligible some, insignificant few speaking truth to power. Okay, uh, well, uh, Dr. Mo, uh, let's talk about jihad. Jihad, an Arabic word, you know, often translated as holy war. But uh, some people believe that, in a, or some scholars, that in a purely linguistic sense, the word jihad means struggling you know, or striving. Um, what's your position with that? Now, there is nothing like holy war in Islam. A Muslim, you know, Islam encapsulate everything imaginable and unimaginable. In the Quran chapter 6 verse 38, Allah says, Man farat na kitab meaning we have not left anything unmentioned in this book. Jihad means striving in the will of Allah. For example, in the Quran chapter 29 verse 69, Allah says, Those who strive in their way, we increase them in guidance. So jihad means uh, striving in the course of Allah. You know, in Yoruba palace, even those of us who are Muslims, who are engaged in the jihad the activities, sometimes we say, a good jihad. Maybe we went to hospital to visit the sick, or we went on a charitable mission. At the end of the day, we say, a good jihad. Jihad does not translate to mean only war in Islam. Even though a Muslim is allowed to fight in self-defense. Okay, a so Muslim is allowed to fight in self-defense. And but, but that doesn't translate to you know um, holy war or jihad when it is fighting not a in self-defense. Even when a Muslim in the Quran chapter 2, verse 190, Allah says, I'm quoting Babati, I'm fighting the cause of Allah, those who fight you, but do not transgress the limit, for Allah lost not the transgressors. Fight those who fight you. It then means that uh, when Muslims are fighting in self-defense. If they have to fight in fair type defense, there are rules of engagement. There are red lines you must not cross. You don't attack women. You don't attack children. You don't kill. Uh, you don't kill. Uh, you don't attack uh, the unhealthy one, the sick ones, the elderly. You don't even destroy the plantations of those you are fighting with. And Allah says, do not transgress the limit. When the enemy, when they surrender, you don't fight again. It's not a question of uh, you are surrendering now that you have killed uh, 10 of us and we have succeeded in killing only two. We won't allow that uh, surrender to take effect. That is Islam for you. Fighting in self-defense. And you can see, if you look that one at analytically and commonsensically, you will see that uh, it is, it is it's, it's, it's in place. Now, every nation of the world has a standing army because of inevitability of a warfare check and balances that is why Allah says in quran chapter 22 39 to 40 that you are allowed to fight in self-defense for the purpose of a save a check and balances if some people are not are not made to defend or curtail the atrocity of some other people churches malls synagogue where the name of god is, is mentioned will have been destroyed even while fighting when the muslim has to fight in self-defense the Quran specifically states that you must not destroy churches. 
You must not destroy shrines. That is Islam for you. But today, many of us who are Muslims, we are Muslim by chance, not by choice. And so we don't understand the stipulations of Islam. And that is why you find so many so-called Muslims behaving on Islamically. Jihad, the prophet of Islam, even when Muslims, when they came from a warfare, Allah said, uh, the prophet said, you have come from a, a small warfare. A bigger one is jihad against your own soul. You can see that uh, Iman, the uh, Iman base, the way we behave, when you want anything, the tendencies for you to employ the tactics of a do and die. So, so, so is it a matter of interpretation? Uh, because like I said, you know, uh, Jia, the often translation, you know, Muslims, you know, give to it. Now you're saying there's nothing like uh, holy war. That's not uh, the meaning of jihad. So I'm, I'm looking at it from this perspective. That is it a matter of translation? Now. Or interpretation? It is not a question of interpretation. It is the generic meaning of a jihad. Jihad means to struggle. You, even anybody say no Muslim, yeah. Whether you like it or not, because our society is heterogeneously populated, you must be mingling in your family, even if you are a Christian, you have Muslims. In my family, even though a Muslim, I have a Christian. You will have listened to Muslim youth, and even the elderly ones say, Ekujihad. Even in this month of Ramadan, your wife who is cooking for you in the, in the early morning, and uh, cooking for you, when you want to break uh, your fast, you can say, Ekujihad. That is, you are engaged in rewardable activities. So jihad is not about the warfare. But you see, Islam is being negatively profiled, particularly by people in the media. Like I said, there's some ways. Now, you have a Boko Haram mm -hmm. in the northern part of the country. Mm -hmm. What the Boko Haram people are doing, like I always say, if that were to be Islamic, no reasonable person must be a Muslim. Killing people conscienceslessly, heartlessly, and mindlessly whether they offend you or they don't offend you and in most cases they didn't they don't even offend you they are called islamic fundamentalists but see i pop see what happened they have for okay i pop esn they are perpetrating in the southern part of the country and that is a place where the people they are predominantly christian you don't have them you don't have a tag of a religion but, to it but they are either don't the you government think... or militant mm. So it's a media creation. Mm. Media creation. Like, let me just add but, this before you interrupt. Now, you know, some people even say that Islam was spread by the sword. That the prophet of Islam had the Quran in one hand and had the sword in another hand. And when he encountered any non Muslim, he would uh, confront that particular mm. person. Do you want to accept the Quran or your head will you be beheaded? Whereas the Quran was not in a book form when the prophet was around. So, so but, many negative But Dr. Dawood, uh, don't you think that uh, what they are fighting for quite different? Why IPOP uh, seems to be uh, you know, uh, fighting for secession? Boko Haram is against Western education. Boko Haram. Say, no, mm. we are against Western education. We don't want Western education mm. in Nigeria. So, what they are fighting for seems to be different. Because I could remember, even during as early as 2009, 10, 11, you know, uh, many media organizations referred to Boko Haram Islamic sects. Later, we felt like, okay, what they are doing is un Islamic, so they shouldn't be referred as Islamic sects. But when they started, they said Boko Haram. They said Western education is forbidden to them. Is the cause uh, seems to be different from what you know, now, IPOB is fighting for. I like that your. I like that's your submission. But let me say this. What Boko Haram stands for, by the implication of their name, the implication of their name is even on Islamic. Islam is about knowledge. Quran chapter 39, verse 9. Allah says, Ali yasta wi ladina la yalamun, wa ladina la yalamun. Can you compare them, those who know and those who don't know? Islam is about the acquisition of knowledge to the extent that the Prophet, when he was alive, he did say, Utlubul ilim, ilim wala bisim. Seek for knowledge, even if you have to go as far as China. That mm. is to say that every form of knowledge, not only spiritual, is important. Now, when you are talking along the line of, uh, you see, their mission is not the same. Mm -hmm. The Boko Haram people, they are fighting for so-called Islamization agenda, so-called. Mm -hmm. The IPO people, 
they are fighting there for self-determination, secession. Mm -hmm. But see, what terrorist activity can you link to Boko Haram that is not linkable to IPOP? Recently, IPOP, they went to Imo Police Command, kill so many people there, destroy cars, send their pris prisoners, send them free. Those are terrorist activities. But nobody ever attach any religion to what they are doing. So it's double standard. Double standard? Double standard from uh, the media. They are called a militant. They are called a government. Whereas those of them who are doing an Islamic thing, I am sure that what the IPOB and the ESN, what they are doing is also unchristianly. It's but, even immoral. Well, it's even immoral. Well, but, but nobody but attached part of religion to what they are doing there to, to, to what they are doing there whereas all these are wicked activities terrorist acts but when Boko Haram uh, members uh, carry out the nefarious activities you know they they quote you no know, Quran you know they they you no know, Quran in crustaceans so is that not linking it you know, somewhat high pop is more of economic power they saying okay we want to leave Nigeria and Nigeria is also treating them like terrorists so thank you very much you see like i said earlier most of us are muslim by chance not by choice in the western world today we have so many people converting to islam and when they convert to islam you can see the activism you can see the readiness to know so much about islam whereas in this part of the world many people are muslims they are muslims just because they were born into muslim home they didn't even make effort to know much about islam now, the Boko Haram people used to even had that there. Uh, even when they slaughter some people, they say Allah Akbar. By the time some of them were captured and the Nigerian army violated their privacy, what did they find? They found charms, they found the, a condom and the rest of it. These people, and I've said that if what Boko Haram people, if they are what they are doing, if anybody says it's Islamic, then no reasonable person must be a Muslim. No reasonable person must be a Muslim. If killing people for no just cause, and in Islam, Quran chapter 5, verse 32, Allah says, Diani, whoever kills a person, kills a person unjustifiably, the reward, the punishment that awaits that particular person is the punishment that awaits for that awaits somebody who destroys the whole of humanity. And on the flip side, that is Quran chapter 5, verse 33. Allah says, Anybody who preserves any life, the reward that awaits somebody who preserves the life of another person is the reward that awaits somebody who preserves the life of the whole of humanity. So what they are doing is not contaminous with the teaching of Islam. Mm. Okay, I, I want your take on this. Uh, recently, the uh, Minister of Communication and Digital Economy uh, was linked to a comment, a comment he made in the past, what I could call pro Al-Qaeda, you know, pro Boko Haram comments. And in the wake of that, well, he said yes, he did make you know, those comments, but now uh, he said he has renounced you know, uh, extremism. Uh, but some Nigerians are not comfortable. They believe that uh, uh, it's, we shouldn't take his words you know, for it, and it should be dismissed, or he should resign. What's your take? Now, like I said somewhere else, Bantami was not appointed on the mandate of the Muslim. Any Christian in Gige, who is a Christian, was appointed after, in the wisdom of President Buhari, he found him suitably qualified. So whatever action or inactions of Bantami, these are not issues to be evaluated by me as a person. He was not appointed on the mandate of the Muslim. So if he makes any comment that is found to be unjustifiable, it should be made to clarify his position on such things. But I'm telling you that Islam is about, when you are talking along the, the line of terrorism, Islam does not support terrorism at all. At all. It doesn't support terrorism. Islam is for peace. And to mm. show that Islam is for peace, see, after Ramadan, we are now going into the era, we into another uh, festival in Islam. That is Hindu the Kabir, popularly known as Ilea. And you know the history of Ilea is that uh, Prophet Ibrahim, which the Christians call uh, Abraham, was about to sacrifice his son. And God replaced the son with a ram. 
it then means the implication of a that a replacement is that even to lord to god and lord and creator life of human being is sacrosanct if life of human being is sacrosanct to the lord and creator of the world should it not be sacrosanct to you and i who could not even create a fly dr mo yes i sought your view i i didn't attach religion to it you know i just said if a minister in the past made pro Akida comments in your own assessment in your own assessment do you think he should still be holding that position now that is for the president of the federal republic of nigeria to take action on either way as a person he was not don't forget that uh, whether you had religion to it or you don't have the religion to it is a muslim the mere fact that he's a Muslim, I am a Muslim too. He was not there, he's not there on the mandate of the Muslim. If he makes any statement that the president considers to be inflammatory, considered to be unjustifiable, the president owes the yam and the night. That is beyond my own purview as a person. There are opinions which you hesitate to express. Because today in Nigeria, I know that when it comes to matter of religion, anything that relates to religion today has been politicized. We knew of somebody who was a, a vice chancellor in one of uh, the earliest universities in the world, who was found culpable, and uh, despite the fact of his culpability, the person was even re retained. So you have so many politics in Nigeria. You see less, you hear more, you see less. That is the Nigerian situation for you. But as far as Pantami is concerned, the president as the commander-in-chief of Nigerian of, of our forces, he holds the yam and the nile. I am a Muslim. If I want to make any comment, anything I want to say, I must be guided by Islam. I must be guided by Islam. And I, don't, I can't hold any brief for anybody. That's the point I'm making. Well, uh, from the situation of things, uh, the federal government is saying, yes, uh, they uh, want to believe he has um, well, they are taking his forgiveness or his renouncements and saying, why not? Uh, he should is reformed now, and nobody should hold um, his past views you know, against him. But like I said, some Nigerians are just worried that can we really say someone who held you no know, such uh, views in the past and coming out to say, no, I'm doing. I was young when I made that statement. Now I know better. Can you really trust you know, that person? So I mean, that's just the uh, situation right See, now. Let me draw an analogy. I'm aware of somebody who is a Christian who claimed to be a former prisoner and who even ruled out his own atrocities while he was, he said he was an armed robber. After being an armed robber, he was in prison. He ruled out his own atrocities, yet that particular person was not dealt with. He will come out anywhere he goes. He wants to reform some other people. He didn't want some other people to become a ham robbery, not prisoner. He will be saying that one. Imagine a situation where somebody who had been robbed or killed unjustifiably in the past, the family of that particular person is there while he's confessing. What would that particular person do? So when you are talking along this line, you know, in Christianity, there's forgiveness. In Islam, there's also forgiveness. The in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 12 when you are reading the Lord's Prayer forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and when you go to Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 I'm quoting verbatim Jesus said, Christ said if you don't forgive those who sin against you your Father in heaven will not forgive you if you forgive those who sin against you your Father in heaven will also forgive you there is a forgiveness in Islam Allah says in Quran chapter 39 verse 53 no matter what you have done in the past if you are repentant you are redeemable and i think that is the position of christianity but in nigeria because everything in nigeria is politicized along muslim line along christian line along ethnicity it's become cloudy in most cases that is why i'm saying that i'm not interested but, in but it seems you know from your explanation i could deduce your your position no i'm just you see just to show that uh, the thing is not one-sided it's not one-sided the trend you are a journalist 
and I know no. you are well trained. But your explanation is yeah. tinted towards no. No, I'm just doing some clarification. I'm just doing some clarification. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your clarification along the line that uh, if what is good for the goose, when you are talking along the line of what is source for the goose, is also source for the gander. Mm -hmm. That's the point I'm making. In Christianity, can you argue that there is forgiveness? Somebody has done anything in the past that is bad, and that particular person owns up that he did it, and is now seeking forgiveness. In Christianity, that is acceptable. In Islam, it's also acceptable. That is not to say that uh, somebody should be careless in making their statements. You must always be circumspect. But I'm trying to elasticize the whole thing. I don't want to pigeonhole it. You, are pig you want to pigeonhole it, and I want to elasticize the whole thing to encapsulate so many other things. Because what I could deduce is, I think you're saying that why not it should be forgiven if... Uh, if somebody sees, if somebody in Christianity, if somebody does anything, and what he did, he owns up that what but, he but, did is bad. But, 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 Dr. Mo, what is not, the position of Christianity? Even I think matter. the position of Christianity mm. is that that particular person mm. should be governed. I think the position, I, I know that the position of Islam is that that person Dr. should Mo, be governed. That, that does not, not mean that uh, what he did was good. Mm -hmm. It's not even a matter of forgiveness. I think it's just a matter of trust. That this person made, you know, these comments in the past. Now is holding a very sensitive positions, position rather. Can he be trusted? So I don't want us to look at it from the line now, of forgiveness. You see, the boss told some president Muhammad Buhari's table. You are not Buhari, neither am I Buhari. So it's a contentious thing. Even issues that are not contentious, Nigerian, we are in the habit of rendering it contentious. But this one is even inherently contentious. But the ball stops on Buhari's table. He holds the yam and the knife. Whatever he does, whether you like it, whether I like it, he will just do what he thinks is uh, in order. And history is there to judge Buhari. Whether what he does now is good later, history is there to judge him. Mm. Okay, uh, Dr. Mo, now let's talk about the challenge of extremism. You know, we have ISIS, um, Al Qaeda. Uh, yes, we've talked about you know, Boko Haram, uh, but also you know, we have, um, I think, fundamentally, uh, two types of, we have the Sunni and we have the Shiites. Uh, but according to what I have, a Pew Research Center survey you know, from 2012 shows that 40% of Sunni Muslims uh, well, from Middle East and North Africa do not accept Shiites as fellow Muslims. Yes, I'd, I can also look at it from uh, the hango of the El Zakizaki who has been in the dissension you know, since 2015. Uh, what's your take? How have you describe the Shiites? Uh, do you think are the Sunnis you know, tolerable enough? Or do you also say, do you call them Muslims or extremists? Now, you see, even in traditional religion, you have divisions. An Ogun worshipper is a traditionalist. An Oro worshipper is a traditionalist. You have divisions. And all of them, they come under the description of traditionalists. In Christianity, you have that division too. You can also see that the Catholic are like uh, the deeper life, not uh, the Kirbun and Serafu, like the Celestia. So you have all those divisions. In Islam, the standard Islam that I know is Sunni. Shia, the Shiites, they have uh, some beliefs which are not in line with the standard uh, way of Islam. And that is why, even in Mecca today, they don't allow them to perform Hajj. That is Islam for you. But it is not for me to judge them. If anybody wants to join a season, I can preach to that particular person. If my preachment is acceptable to him, all well and good. If it is not acceptable, I have nothing to do against that particular person. It's a free word. You know, there's freedom of worship in Nigeria. Yeah? Freedom of worship. Freedom of thought. Freedom of action, but the freedom always has a uh, its limitation. But in Islam, the Shia they are not considered uh, modern Muslims. That is the position of Islam. Some other people may argue it because you see, when you are talking on this side, another person will talk on the flip side. But that is the position of Islam. And even in Makkah, that's their position. That the Shiites, because the Shiite. There are certain things that are attached to them 
that are deemed to be un Islamic. That, okay. That's my submission. Mm. Dr. Mo, let's talk about uh, the use of hijab. Hijab. Uh, yes, hijab. But you are aware of what um, happened in Kwara states in which uh, um, government funded missionary Christian missionary schools uh, said no <laughs> the use of hijab is not allowed and um, well it became an issue and the government uh, made an order that all schools that should students should be allowed you know, to use hijab and you know the back and forth negotiations here and there uh, but looking at what happened in Kwara state it seems that that's uh, left a sore taste you know in the mouth why some believe that yes these are missionary schools uh, with visions and missions yes the state government has a stake the fact that they fund the school but it shouldn't be a matter of you know you forcing them you should also respect you know the vision and the missions of the schools and that's a very good one contentious but honestly very easy certain things are not debatable the schools baptists and the rest of them were established by Christian missions. And in 1974, the government, that was the time of uh, General Obasanjo as head of state. The government of the time, in his own wisdom, decided to take over the schools and they took the school over. Go and read the takeover thing. They asked all the missionary schools, including uh, the Muslims one, do you want to receive a compensation? Some of them said they wanted to receive a compensation. They gave them. Some of them said they just let go. And that happened. Now let me use this uh, common sense analysis. If you have a car, you know the color of your car. The number is there. The plate number, nothing changes. And the car is sold to me. And by the time I'm only using the car, your family just comes out and say, this is our father's car. Is it, a, is, is it anymore your own car? The schools today, they are best Muslim named school, Christian named school, not Christian school, not Muslim schools, because they are being funded totally by government. By the time the government took it over in 1974, if there were two blocks of classroom, the classrooms will have multiplied. EU pays the piper, cost the two. It's this government that pays the piper. And in the quarter example that you have just cited, the incumbent governor here today, Ahmed, his father was, was the first lawyer in the, whole, in the whole of the northern Nigeria. His father also established his school in Lorne College. That school, the father handed it over to the government, and it is now called a government college in Lorne. Can the incumbent governor go there to, to claim it? And when you are talking of it on the line of religion, religion is about compassion. But they are now public them. property. But we still regard them as missionary schools. If you the regard name, them the as name, missionary schools. The name yeah. reflects the name reflects that that the they name, are missionary schools. You see the names have not changed. The name have not changed. He is a, the name is a matter of appreciation. And Monitala Mohammed International Airport was uh, to immortalize uh, Monitala. Can the family of Monitala Mohammed go to the airport and say they are the owner? Can the family of Inamdi Aziki go to the airport in the, and say they are the owner? So this is a precious immortalization of the role they have played, the beautiful role they have played. They are no longer owners. Let's talk about uh, music. Music? Music. Music in Islam. Is music haram or halal? Well, neither here nor there. Music is not haram in the sense that uh, when you don't uh, add the drumming into it, you know, in, a, in, a, in Islam, we have what we call a waka. Mm -hmm. The waka is always very uh, sonorous. You have an Islamic song. But when you add the drum and all the rest of it, these other things to it, it becomes a rap. But minus that one, it's a lad. And you see that even when uh, Muslim clerics, when they come on here, here, you see that even the way the Quran mm -hmm. is recited, see the rendition, sonorous rendition, is musicalized. But when you do want to do the musicalization, it must not involve uh, equipments, like instruments like a drum and the rest of it. By the time that is added, it, be, 
because uh, well uh, some scholars have uh, a different position they believe that the first consistent scholarly attack on music dates uh, to mid uh, 10th century and it seems to be in response to elicit the behavior tied to music rather than the music. So some believe that it's haram when uh, the music uh, leads the Muslim uh, to maybe elicit or bad behavior. That's, that's where it is haram. But it's not haram if the music uh, does not, if the music, if the content is fine and doesn't uh, lead a Muslim to, be, to behave in um, an un Islamic yeah, way. So, but, but no, you, you, you said drums. You don't. You said drums, instruments. instruments you said instruments. So can you now say that drums, instruments, will lead you know Muslims to behave in an un-Islamic way? You know these things are different. I tend to believe that contents of the songs or the music would dictate this, not the instruments. Now, just look at it yourself. In Nigeria today, a number of musicians. I don't want to. I don't want to carpet all of them. When they sing, what happens? See the way young ladies, see the way they dance there. See the way they behave. So Islam is proactive. That is why it says, don't involve a drum on any form of instrument. Well, you see, human beings, you cannot pay the whole thinking process of human beings. If some people say it's Islamic, we are not arguing with them. But as far as I know, it's on Islamic when you are there. When you had the drum instruments and the rest of it is on Islamic. So what about those that sell records and the music is all about the propagation. <laughs> the music is all about the propagation of, of Islam. Yes. Well, uh, Islam can be can be better propagated. You see, they say what they call I don't know how to translate it into English. Waka, ikanatiola esambe, ikanatiola esambe. You can see that it's musical. Mm -hmm. It's also danceable, but without a musical instrument. That is the position of Islam. Those selling records and the rest of it, we can't sanction them. But everybody knows. You see, like I always say, Tabani Islam, Gonlati, Badadioyo, then you can buy Defiditi, Tony, Onfiditi, CB. We cannot play now by the person. We say Islam is a as a lendy as a yo and somebody now gets to a town very close to your fidelity and says like the name suggests this is why we tanda we have no problem with that particular person because islam does not ask us to be sanctioning people even the prophet of god allah was not allowed to be sanctioning people tell them what allah says tell them the stipulations of islam you are not to monitor their movement you are not to sanction them we are not sanctioning anybody we are saying the reality of Islam, as I know. Mm. Okay, uh, Dr. Mo, let's talk about uh, women in Islam. Yes, I know uh, quite well that uh, women are not allowed uh, to, it's not permissible in Islam for them to lead you know, prayers. Uh, what's, what are they? How will you define you know, their roles you know, in, in Islam? Yes, I know that in Arab countries, the uh, women have limited roles you know, to play. I know in so many years in Saudi Arabia, for instance, uh, women were not allowed to drive. I think uh, 2018, yes, that's when they were allowed to drive. So when you look at some of these, uh, uh, some of these rules, you know, banning women from uh, watching football or watching games in the stadium, uh, there is something called guardianship. If uh, most times in Arab countries, as a woman, you have to have a guide, a male guardian. It could be son, brother, husband. Or so close relations. Or, or close relations. Are all these, are they Islamic or they are just maybe cultural? Thank you very much. You know, in, a woman in Islam, they are very, very precious. Very, very precious. And they are vulnerable. And Islam protects them to a large extent from vulnerability. For example, there are stipulations as to how a typical Muslim woman, a lady, should dress. Women are so much honor in Islam, so much honor in Islam. For example, we have uh, 114 chapters in the Quran. Out of the 114 chapters in the Quran, a whole chapter is dedicated to the woman, Surah Nisa, that is chapter 4. No chapter of the Quran is dedicated to, 
to men. Again, women in Islam, they are so much honor. They are placed on the pedestal, indescribable pedestal. The prophet said, if your mother calls you, if your father calls you, answer once. If your mother calls you, answer three times. And the prophet also said, paradise lies at the feet of mother. But women, knowing their vulnerability, Islam tries to protect them as much as possible. That is why, like you have rightly identified, they need a guardianship. If a lady is, if a lady is going on night now and the husband is not there, there must be somebody who is so much trustworthy, preferably from the, the inside the family, mm. to accompany that particular, even if the lady is elderly. And that is not applicable to a male pilgrim. So it is not a question of uh, sidelining them. And when we want to pray, a lady not allowed to lead a prayer, if a lady leads prayer, even when the lady is praying individually, the lady, there are some prayers when we want to perform them, we do loud recitation. There are some where we do silent recitation. In all the prayers of a woman, it must be a silent recitation. Even if she is praying in the confines of her husband's room, it should be because the voice of women are also attractive. So many things are attractive without men. It is not a question of the end. When A marries, what A considers a man in his own wife may not be what a B considers. So Islam tries as much as possible to protect uh, the women. It is not a question of imprisoning them or trying to be unjust to them. Mm. It is because they are vulnerable. Mm. And you know in Yoruba land, they call them omagi, omaton shekeni, omaogi. Women are always very attractive. So many things are attractive. But it may be the hair of a woman that attracts another person. It may be the leg. That is why you have uh, some uh, on two where the uh, female students in universities and even outside the campus putting on their mini dresses they want to, ex to expose their leg hot leg so to say so in islam that is not acceptable so and that is why in the mosque you hardly hear of a uh, imam violating the privacy of a female worshiper you hardly hear that one because that is not to say that all the imams mm. are good but nothing is left to chance when it comes to female male relationship, even the mosque, when they want to, to, to worship female apart, male apart, even when we have a public gathering, male apart, female apart, because of the vulnerability of women, which is beyond contention. What about the involvement in sports, you know, for instance? Because I could recall that there was a time Saudi Arabia proposed you know, to host Olympics without women. I could recall that uh, also uh, when Saudi Arabia sent female athletes uh, to uh, the Olympics for the first time at London 2012 and hardline clerics denounced the competitors as prostitutes. Like I also give an instance of women not you know, uh, permitted to drive even though that's, that has changed now. Uh, but don't you think these things are changing? Even Saudi Arabia, the way... The, the king of Saudi Arabia now, many Muslim scholars, I score it in him. Because what he's doing is like the Islamic. When you allow like a woman to drive, you see, it will even lead to mistrust, marital mistrust. The wife just rides out anyhow. So, so you, you, you say uh, women should not be allowed to drive? Women, if they are to be allowed to drive, it has to be regulated. There are, there are some women who could not be trusted. It is only you who will know your wife. I know my own wife too. Once you know your wife, you know the areas that uh, she could be vulnerable. You don't open the gate of that particular area. Islam is, considers them as very precious. And Islam is very, very protective, protective about women generally. So women just being free, being let loose like a man could be dangerous. And you know it's happening in our society here. Yeah. We know of uh, many the, we hear cases of uh, many uh, working women. The way they even, when a woman is going out of the house and she, she dresses so seductively, the husband becomes uh, suspicious. Women, but, but, wife who but, ordinarily, but, when it's up to, doctor, would dress now, uh, so shabbily. Mm, but, but when it's going out. But doctor, now, uh, I mean, women, 
or let me say many women want no more involvement they are saying yes uh, involvement in politics you know they want you know, their voice you not know, to be heard you know we now have feminists we now have uh, those that believe that yes uh, women should not be at the back seats they can also do what men do you see all these things have i know of people whose wife have gone into politics and today there's a marital damage beyond remedy I know of a but are these things also to, are these things not applicable to men too? Well, in the case women, the way God creates man, man is not as vulnerable as women. You know, anybody will find it difficult to to tantalize you as a person, but it's always very easy to tantalize a woman. Let me give a personal experience. I when I was in the Obafemele University. I was working there. I had to board a commercial bus. I was there in that particular bus, met a lady there, and some 15 minutes later, a boy came in. If I had met the two of them in the bus, I would have concluded that perhaps they were from the same home, they were friends. That boy, very close to me, started talking to the lady. Less than 20 minutes, they were hugging and kissing in the bus. By the time we got to the campus, that boy paid for the lady, and the lady just uh, disembarked and followed her. That is not uh, very possible with men. Women are very, very vulnerable. That is beyond argument. And Islam wants to protect them because of their inherent vulnerability. That is why all the devices that are brought to bear when you're talking along the line of uh, Islam. But, but uh, doctor, unfortunately, uh, these uh, things are really changing, even in Saudi Arabia. Is modernity not uh, catching up or changing things? Now, th think of a sport now. When a lady is involved in the rigorous sport, you can see that uh, by the time that power club, a lady is going up and down. Can you think of uh, so many men who could be mentally deranged along that particular line? In Saudi Arabia, what the king is doing is on Islamic. And many people are arguing that they are, they, they are contenting it with him. But because he was the yarn and the night, that is why he's doing that. And honestly, it could backfire. Even today in Saudi Arabia, women have been allowed as a, as a hostess in the hotel, which is very, very dangerous. This man is also practicing. It, that, that does not mean that he's Islamic. He's not Islamic, but he's practicing it. Mm. Because he has turned himself into a dictator. Mm. All the clerics there have been silenced. Any cleric who dare speak will be imprisoned. That is what is happening now in Saudi Arabia. Well, uh, Dr. Mo, uh, we have to go now. Uh, so, so many questions, <laughs> but uh, limited time. I think you've been able to do justice uh, to uh, many of these questions. So, uh, many thanks you know, for uh, coming. Thanks for honoring our invitation on today's edition of Hot Seats on Ogun State Television. Uh, many thanks. And that's the show uh, for today. Uh, many thanks uh, for watching. Till next week, when we bring to your viewing pleasure another uh, personality, another eminent personality, I say to you, stay safe. And of course, stay out of trouble. Bye for now.